Okay, my name is Brenda Basson. Um, I study reflexology in uh, New York City at the Open Center, one of the, the oldest holistic healing centers in the country. Uh, New York has that claim to fame, and it's still open. Right now they've moved, they were in Soho when I went to school there, but then I went back to school again when I moved back to New York City and they were in Manhattan. But it's a one, if you ever get a chance to go, it's a wonderful place. If you ever get a chance to go and take a class, you should. It's just an amazing place. Could you repeat the name of it? It's called the Open Center. Open? Open, O-P-E-N, the Open Center. Where did they move to? They moved to, in Manhattan? What was Little it? Korea. Huh? Little Korea. Little Korea? In in, East 30. Yeah. But it's it's just an amazing, amazing place to take a class. They have classes from all over the, they fly in people from all over the world to do these classes. I've been many times. Yeah, they're great. And let me tell you how I got started. How I got started with the holistic um, healing was I have an identical twin, and she was in a very serious car accident 35 years ago. Slammed her face into the windshield. Messed up her sinuses really bad. We didn't know this until a few, about five years ago, but she had a stroke at the same time. She was 32 at the time, and she had a stroke. They didn't have MRIs back then. They didn't check her for a stroke to see if she would had one, but she did mess up her sinuses. So she started having severe sinus infections, and she started having headaches. So for 30 years, she had headaches every day. And so she's going to all these doctors trying to find out how she can get rid of these headaches and had all this stuff done to her, spent thousands of dollars, and nothing worked. So, um, my husband, 27 years ago, donated bone marrow, and he contracted a virus when he, from one of the needles, and it infected the, all the puncture wounds in his pelvic. There's 60 to 80 puncture wounds in his pelvic, and we went to, um, he started getting really, really sick, and we knew it was the, the virus. We knew that he had the virus. We knew that the virus was attacking his body. And so we, uh, the Bone Marrow Institute got a team of doctors together, and we went to Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. And they did a barrage of tests on him, and they said, um, you won't live to be 60, and you'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 55. And he was 48 at the time. And we were devastated. I'm like, God, you know, he heals, he saves somebody's life. Somebody didn't even know. And now he's going to die. He's going to be in a wheelchair in a few years, really? So I fell on my knees and I just said, you know how we are. At least I am. This is not fair. That's the first thing I would say. It's not fair. I said, God, and I told him then, I said, if you will heal him. Because I know God is in miraculous of you. Business. He's done it to me several times. He's healed me of a heart condition, a kidney condition, several things. I said, if you'll heal him, I'll tell everybody. Well, two weeks later, I found this book by Dr. Daniel Pinnewell. And a lot of people don't know this, but one third of the, of the um, doctors, MDs in France are aromatherapists. And they write prescriptions for essential oils, just like the doctors here write prescriptions for uh, drugs. And so I started, because it, this is a book about a young girl who has sinus problems, I thought, well, this is gonna help Barbara, my twin. And see, she even has reflexology in here. Can you and show the title again, or how it looks? What's it's called uh, Natural Home Health Care Using Essential Oils. And the author is? By Dr. Daniel Penwell, P-E-N-O-E-L, Penwell and his wife, Marie Pinnewell. And God just spoke to me and said, this is gonna heal Dennis. So I started using the oils. Um, I, started, I started buying the oils and found out, of course, that Dr. Pinnewell was uh, a reflexologist through the book. And so I decided to go to school for reflexology. So he went from being sick this is how I know that reflexology works. He went from being sick chronically. I mean, he would have shingles, he had the gout, he had the flu, he would just be sick. I could not keep him well, no matter how good we ate or how, you know, the exercise, whatever. And he went from being chronically sick 
all the time to when I started doing the reflexology on him, I started immediately once I started school. I got a book, started studying it, and I started using him as my practice person. So I would work on him. So, you know, every night I come home and I would work on him for 15 minutes. The doctor, the, my teacher said no more than 15 minutes. If you're going to work on yourself, no more than 15 minutes a day. If you're going to do it every day. It's better to do it 15 minutes a day than it is for 45 minutes or an hour for a week. Just once a week, okay? Do it every day. And so he had flat feet, bunions on, that he was getting ready to have to have bunion surgery. Four hammer toes, two on each feet. I, I was able to alleviate all the hammer toes, the bunions, and he no longer has flat feet. So I did that within the first six months of doing reflexology. If you do this continually, if you're dedicated to it and you do it, and this is how I know it works. Okay, we were able to build his immune system up to fight off the virus. And we were able to, with the oils, we killed the weak virus so that, you know, that killed part of the virus. But we know it's still there and he still has it. Uh, a few years ago, his mother was sick. And so I came up here, we both came up. He had to teach a class, go back to South Carolina and teach. I stayed here for two months to help take care of her. And when I got, well, when he came back up to pick me up, because I had not done reflexology on him for two months, the way we know the virus is active is he breaks out in boils up and down his spine and across his backside here, because that's where they extracted the bone. He had like seven boils up and down his spine and in his neck. And he said, Brenda, I didn't want to tell you, but I think if they'd have cut my head off, I would have felt better. So reflexology does that much for him. I'm not saying he's completely pain-free, but I, for 22 years, other than those two months, for 22 years, I work on him every night. Rarely, uh, in a six-month period, I don't miss maybe one, month, one night. I mean, it doesn't matter how late we get home, that 15 minutes is so important. And we, this is what I truly believe. I truly believe that when God brings healing into our life, if we are dedicated to it, and it's important enough to us, and we continue doing it, God will continue healing us. So the oils are not a quick fix. Reflexology, not a quick fix. But see, we were never meant, see I, this is the difference between my twin and I. I probably spend 90% of my life, and have since I was born, barefooted. I just hate shoes. I never wear them. I can't stand them. If I go somewhere, I usually take my shoes off when I get there. My twin can, could never stand to have her feet on the floor. She put shoes on from the minute she got up in the morning until she went to bed at night. We did not know this. You know, back 50, 60 years ago, they didn't talk about bowel movements very much. You know, we didn't, but we always said I had a nervous stomach and she was we didn't know she was constipated, but she was. She was constipated. And from, once she started doing reflexology on herself, and once she started um, walking around barefooted, she quit being constipated. So reflexology probably is at best for that, your digestive system. And I'll show you, it's the center of your foot. But this, this kind of is the reason I also got started teaching. I found this article in Reader's Digest, and I was furious when I read it. I was like, I cannot believe this, God. And God gave me a verse, and he said, my people perish from lack of knowledge. And he said, if you want to change it, go out there and teach some people. And then the only thing I ask you is that you teach someone else. Okay, and then ask them to teach someone else. And if we do that, then we'll all learn. We'll all know. But this is from, um, like I said, Reader's Digest. And it was about the FDA and how the FDA knew that this drug uh, caused liver damage and yet they okayed it anyway. But um, this is what really made me mad. The, the China, in China, 
This is like 2006, I think. Maybe, I don't know what year it was. I think it was 2006. Um, the Chinese factories, 714 Chinese factories made our drugs. Most of our drugs are, are made in China. And only 13 factories were checked by the FDA that year. So we don't really even know what they're making. But that, that made me mad enough. But this really made me mad. There was a woman, a beautiful woman. She, um, her, she, let's see, she was 51 years old, very healthy. And she came in, she'd been to the doctor with like an upper respiratory, she thought she had a bronchitis or something. So the doctor gave her an antibiotic. Y'all probably heard about it. Um, Ketek. Do y'all remember about years ago, T-K-E-T-E-K, um, K -E -T -E -K. look it up, Ketek. Well, within, let's see, how many weeks? A couple of weeks. Uh, no, I don't even think she took it that long. She was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, a third of her liver, it says it, uh, her liver was only a third of its normal size, and it had massive tissue death. And so he was talking to, he couldn't figure out why, you know, because she was healthy. She jogged, she was 51 years old, ate healthy, didn't drink or smoke, she was healthy. And um, she, he was talking, this doctor was talking to another doctor and said, well, you know, I got a patient and he died. And it was the same thing. And he had given the key take. They started checking into it. Come to find out, um, there was a uh, 18 deaths, and there's there's no way of really knowing how many people died, because of so much was given before they started checking. But there was 134 cases of liver damage that they know was caused by Kite. And you know we don't really know when a doctor gives us a drug. Mm -hmm. And I say this, I have a a, a son-in-law who has allergies. And so he's allergic to seafood. And one time he was working and he couldn't take off, but he had eaten something and he was itching all over. So he rubs the, the, uh, his arms with Benadryl. He takes the Benadryl pills and he ends up having a heart attack. He was, let's see, Gerald's 50, 54 now, I think, and I'm 52. And he was about 35, 37, something like that. Benadryl will cause you to have a heart attack, but he didn't know that. And the doctor even told him it was because you took too much Benadryl and you put it on your arms. We don't know what we're taking. I had a brain bleed five years ago, and the doctor told me if I had been taking aspirin every day, I would have died. So um, we don't know what we're taking a lot of times, and we think, yeah. Five years ago, I took kidney bean extract. It was a diet supplement. So I have a little bit, um, a little bit of a liver problem. I almost died. The doctor, I just almost died, and the doctor said, "What are you taking?" And I told him that kidney bean extract. And it wasn't. You're right. It wasn't inspected. And you I got to be really careful. careful. Oh my God, it's I tell it's people, check. Oh, no, no, no herbs. Herbs. it's just like herbs. You, you have to be very, that's why you need to take herbs from a reputable company. You need to get oils from a reputable company. And let me tell you how I got started. It was because of him again. Um, he started having seizures about, I guess, maybe, yeah, and that was about 10 years into my reflexology. And I'm, I'm like, what's going on? He started having seizures at night. And we call them seizures because you wake up and be shaking like this and, you know, it was, the doctors were like, well, it's the virus. And I'm like, well, God, I'm doing everything you told me to do now. What's going on? It went from once a month, within a year period, once a month to like twice a week. And the doctors are like, well, we can give you anti-seizure medication. And Dennis couldn't take the anti-seizure medicine. It made him feel like his head was like up here. So anyway, um, he came up here. Do you want to, in fact, it was here in Bennington. We came up here. Dennis happened to see a, um, a church was having a woman 
and she was a reflexologist and essential oils, and she was having it just like this, a teaching and a training. And I'm like, well, I'm going. So I went, and God told me, he said, buy those oils. And I'm like, you. I'm like, well, they're a little more expensive, God, than what I normally buy, you know. And so I felt very strongly, buy those oils. I said, okay. So I bought a couple of bottles that night. I came home. I anointed his feet with the oils, which I anoint his feet every night with the oils. I anointed his feet with the oils that night and did the reflexology session, and he never had another uh, seizure. So I've been using Young Living ever since. And Young Living, you know, there are other good oils out there. doTERRA, Nature Sunshine. I use Nature Sunshine sometimes. Um, okay, let me get quickly. I want to quickly go through before I start with the reflexology. Something else that God brought into my life back, oh, it's been a year and a half ago now. But, you know, there's always a reason, and, and people get healed from it, and I'm like, okay, God, there's always a reason for everything. Salicylates. I had never heard of salicylates before. Before I became salicylate sensitive. Let me show you what happened with the salicylate sensitivity. I'll pass this around. I took a picture of what happened to me. I know. I broke out in welts. Yeah. All over my neck, my shoulders, my face, my arms. My twin had become salicylate sensitive six months before. So that's how I knew what it was. And salicylates are in our food. This is my... This is my diet guide that I have to follow because if I don't follow this, yesterday was a perfect um, example, I, I, I like kombucha, mm -hmm. isn't that what you pronounce it? Kombucha, anyway, yeah. I got a bottle yesterday from the grocery store, it had too much blueberry and cherry in it and I didn't notice that, I should have read mm -hmm. it, it was a different brand than what I usually use. Immediately on the way home, I said, what's wrong with my neck? I looked in the mirror. My face was broke out all over my face, up under my neck, and it was from salicylates. And so I have to be very careful. This is my diet plan right here. You go on that, at the bottom, there'll be salicylatesensitivity.com. You'll see that website. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's what, I, I got this printed off. Salicylates are in fruits and vegetables, naturally. God put them there to keep the bugs, and it's a natural pesticide, and the fungus. It won't rot. Our fruits and vegetables won't rot in the fields. Well, Monsanto decided to up the ante, and they genetically altered the seeds to be have at least two to three times as much salicylates in it. And now people are becoming salicylate sensitive. So I found out I was salicylate sensitive. And how we found out, my twin and I, my twin became salicylate. She broke out from head to toe. Her face looked like she had had a fight with Muhammad Ali. It was really bad. And how we found out, my baby sister says, you know what, that sounds like exactly what Janie, she's allergic to food. Well, she's not really allergic to food. She's allergic to salicylates. Her body has too much salicylates in it, and she, because, and I truly believe that God brought this in my life to heal my friend Debbie. Debbie, in fact, we're getting ready to meet him at Bass Lake now. Next week, we're leaving tomorrow for a week at Bass Lake. It's near Syracuse. It's a resort that we stay at up there, and we've met him there for the last two years. Be our third year, and last year she told me, she says, Brenda, I won't be back. I'm like, y'all aren't coming back anymore? She's like, no. She said, I'm dying, and I won't be back. I said, what's wrong? To look at her, you think she was healthy. I'm like, what's wrong with you, Debbie? And she's like, I almost died. I have this thing that I itch on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I have, in fact, she told me the other day, she said, Brenda, you don't realize I went to over 50 doctors in 50 years, every, done every test that she could try and figure out what was wrong with her. 
and she itched from the inside out and she said a doctor would do all the tests and everything and then they'd tell her, you need to go find another doctor because they were afraid she was going to die on their watch. And she's like, they just sent me to another doctor. And she's like, now it's went into my lungs and she said, I almost died because I can't breathe. So she was on like three different medications for to keep her from going anaphylactic. She was on um, asthma medicine and a CPAC every night. And so I, and I was telling her about what happened to me and that it can be allergies and this basically is an allergy. She's like, do you think that could be what's wrong with me? I'm like, I don't know. The only way to find out is to, guess what doesn't have salicylates? Meat. So you go on, that's what Barb and I had to do. We had to go on a bone marrow diet. So I make my own bone marrow most of the time, but if I if my, don't have any made up, then I'll go ahead and buy, put some of this. But, and make soup out of it. So we lived on bone marrow soup three times a day. Barbara did it for six weeks to get all the salicylates out of her Is body. The bone broth? You take the bone Turkey broth. bone broth or some kind of bone Chicken, broth. Chicken, yeah. Um, is that um, good for your bone marrow? Oh it's yeah. Collagen, so that oh would be yeah. Something Sometimes that you feel, it bone feel broth, bone. It's yeah. Bone yeah, it's bone marrow broth. That's, what I, that's bone marrow broth. And broth. and it's okay. great for you, but it's also for six mm -hmm. ounces of bone broth. If you cook it right, has more protein in it than six ounces of meat, oh. because and it has all the minerals. It's mm. leaching out all the minerals from the bones because I cook my bones like two days. Oh. And on low, just mm -hmm. cook, keep cooking. I got a pot cooking right now at home. And then I cook with it. Hmm? No, I'm I'm doing chicken right now. I do more chicken and turkey than I do beef. I do it in the crock pots. Yeah, a crock pot. Steam. Yeah. And um, so Barbara went on the bone broth and our and went on these two products right here, uh, molybdenum and l glutathione, that leaches the salicylates out of your body. So can you do that instead of the bone marrow? You can, but if you're going to rid your body of it, if you're like we were, I mean, I was broken out all over. I had to get rid of it. I mean, in fact, one time I broke down and went to the hospital. Barbara was afraid I was going to anaphylactic, and they gave me a cortisone shot to keep me from going anaphylactic. So I had to get the, I had reached a certain point that I had to get it out of my body, and this wasn't going to do it fast enough. So the food was what was causing it. What tissues or what organs are affected first and most? Or first um, with first Debbie, um, well, Debbie is off her asthma medicine, so um, fibromyalgia. I tell you, there's a great book that everyone needs to read. It's called The Healthier I Ate, The Sicker I Got. Mm -hmm. And it was about a woman who had fibromyalgia, MS, psoriasis, asthma, all these different issues and problems, and she was allergic to aspirin because aspirin is pure salicylates. And they didn't never tell her that salicylate was in food until she found out herself. Oh, went on a bone marrow broth diet and got all, and everything went away. She no longer had fibromyalgia, MS, psoriasis, everything. Everything went away. With Debbie, she she told me yes a couple of days ago, she's Brenda, I'm off my, all my medication. Asthma, my um, allergies. I no longer have my CPAC. I don't. I'm breathing normally, and her husband went on it, and he, all his arthritis went away. So, is it I, all aspirin? Uh, the the all the aspirin. salicylates are in our food naturally. It's it's in fruits, fruits and vegetables. vegetables. God put it there to keep our fruits and vegetables. You mean the, the, the kind of fruits and vegetables ninety percent of the population is that seventy percent of the population all fruits and vegetables organic. Doesn't matter. God put it there naturally. Oh. So it's naturally there to keep our fruit from rotting in the fields or bugs from eating it. Well, Monsanto. So what are you, what are you to it? Because uh, Monsanto decided to um, up the ante, and now there's three times as much salicylates in there so they can leave them in the fields longer. And now they're putting it in all of our lotions, shampoos. One doctor, I was reading in that book, and one doctor said that he had like five women who were going on, who were getting married, going on birth control pills. Every one of them had a reaction to salicylate sensitivity. They become salicylate sensitive, and it was in their birth control pills. 
So this lights I don't works. understand because, because if you're buying organic vegetables, you but they're they're in there too. Monsanto doesn't affect that. Yes, but, but God does. God put them there. But what does the Monsanto beginning. have to do with Monsanto? Uh, I know they're God. I know they're God. But, but um, Monsanto genetically altered the seed to have three times as much salicylates in there as God put in. Okay. So they're so in there naturally. Genetically modified seed. Right. Okay. Now, so if you when that plant that grows and releases pollen and blows into the non modified Yeah, I know that. Right. But but um, I mean, it, the problem is it's in all it's in all our products now. How do you know? Is there an test for it? Yeah. There is. There's an allergy test. So why the why the allergists never tested Debbie for it? I don't know. But they, they never, there is an allergy test that okay. you can do so to find out if you're yeah, sensitive. Yeah, allergies as far as uh, affecting the body the liver. For me, the liver is the detoxifier. Oh, sure, right. And when you have sensitivity to solicitates, it's because you can ingest a huge amount. Your liver's overloaded. You can't handle it. Liver's overloaded. It can't get rid of it. Right. Right. So a lot of the first symptoms are because of a compromised liver. Well, and also, um, the good thing about the liver, though, doesn't it regenerate itself? At so it you, does. You, uh, it, at and if you get these salicylates out of your body, once, okay. like Debbie did, Clear. Debbie went on a, a bone marrow broth diet. Barbara and I ate, we ate rice, cabbage, and... Um, rice, cabbage, potatoes, white potatoes were peeled three times a day. We take the white broth, potatoes? white potatoes, okay. peeled, and um, make sure you scrub them really good, otherwise you get the salicylates. So, because salicylates is on the outside skin, and that's the reason I can't eat very many fruits, because I, I can't peel. They, they're like apples. The skin is so thin, everything gets in. It's like, a, like I'll eat a non-organic avocado, because the skin is that's right, that's thick. The thicker the skin, it's the so better. Thick. Like yeah. a banana, I can eat bananas because right. the salicylates is out there on the outside of the banana right. skin. Right. But I mean, how am I going to peel a grape? I right. can't eat grapes. Yeah. I can eat very few fruits, very few. I can eat um, apples if they're peeled, and I can eat bananas and pears, and pears if they're peeled. I wonder if peeled you pears. eat the fruit. Like you eat, you chop up the apples and you put them in water in the mm -hmm. morning. I wonder if that would help. Mm -mm. No. No. But but you know, once you Stupid become once you become salicylate sensitive like that, and it manifests itself differently in everyone. I ha I break out in welts all over right here. I, you might be able to see it's red up under here. Seems red. Yesterday it was blood red and all my within minutes my whole face. I'm like, oh my gosh, I had to go home, take Benadryl, you know, drink the bone barrel more uh, just broth and um, just so to I try and get rid of it. Skin, blue eyes, skin manifests on the skin and in the lungs. Um, brown, dark, eye, dark eyed people manifest in the renal area, in the, in the um, liver and the blood. That's but why you with everybody it's different. You know, some people have arthritis. Some people have psoriasis. Some people have asthma. Some people have, um, like Debbie, she had asthma, um, allergies, itching. I can't imagine. How, she said, Brenda, it's so bad. You just can't even imagine how bad it itches. But I can't itch it because it's on the inside of me. And now she's completely healed. So, and there was one lady, I was teaching a class up near um, Niagara Falls last year, and she rode up on her golf cart. Because we go to these, we joined a resort and we go from resort to resort, and I teach at the different resorts. And she rode up there, and she was, wasn't was planning on taking the class. She just happened to hear me saying, talking, and she stayed. And she said, Brenda, I can barely walk. I have to ride a, a golf cart around because I can't walk. I can walk maybe, you know, across the, the house and back again. But um, she said, last night, I ate a bowl of blueberries. She's like, I know this is what's wrong with me. I ate a bowl of blueberries, and she pulled her hair up. She said, look at my neck, and her whole neck was broken out across here. She said, I don't know why I broke out. She said, now I know why. And me, what pushed me over the edge, I love fruit. And so we were at 
Bass Lake, and they have blueberry farms. Oh, yeah. I ate, and I know I shouldn't have done it, probably wasn't a good idea, but I ate a gallon of blueberries within two days by myself. And it pushed me over the edge. I had so many salicylates in my body at one time until it manifested itself that way. And of all the fruits, all the berries, blueberry has the most fiber. So yeah, unfortunately I can't eat blueberries. Strawberries, grapes, I can't eat any of that anymore. I haven't had uh, tomatoes, olive oil. It's amazing at how many things are high in salicylates olive oil is. What if you take um, what you recommended, the uh, molly, however you pronounce it, and, and, and if you malignant. take that every day or when you're going that to eat. That helps a lot. It and helps let's say to you leach took, it out of you. Right, but let's say you were to take that and then you can eat your fruit? Mm -mm. No, you still can't. I still can't. See, I just drank that yesterday oh. with a little bit of blueberry in it and a little bit of raspberry. I was broken out within minutes. So that's more maintenance than therapeutic. It is. I'll always be salicylate sensitive, more than likely. Right. Mm. Now that I've reached that point, I'll always be salicylate. And psoriasis, and and um, I think it's like 75 to 80 percent, maybe 90, maybe even higher than that, of all autistic people mm -hmm. are salicylate sensitive. Like 90 percent. It's, it's a lot of, sal of autistic. Autistic. Autistic people okay. are salicylate They probably have all of this, okay. our autistic kids, right, our people. They have a lot of A lot of those symptoms. And you know what? I have yet wow. to find one person who has an autistic child or a family member that's autistic that even know about the salicylates. Why the doctors don't tell them, I don't know. In fact, there's a drug, oh, there's a drug that's out that they, they uh, made for mm -hmm. autism and, no, I'm sorry, not autism, fibromyalgia for fibromyalgia, and she, this woman that wrote the book, The Healthier I Ate, The Sicker I Got, mm -hmm. she said that um, they have a website, that this drug manufacturer has a website that tells you, um, rates all products, like hair products, body products, you know, vitamins, everything, how much salicylate's in it, because if you, take, if you eat, ingest too many salicylates, this um, drug for fibromyalgia will not work if you take too, if you eat too many salicylates. But like she said, could it be that they're cutting back on the salicylates and that's the reason that they're not having Because now when she stopped with the salicylates, her fibromyalgia went away. Her MS went away. Her psoriasis. Everything went away. I mean, this book is very, it's a quick read, a little tiny book. I highly recommend it to everyone. The healthier I ate, the sicker I got. And she has a cookbook to go with it. You know, you, I ordered the cookbook so I could cook things. You mentioned that meat products doesn't have our meat, like the bone. Right. Uh, well, unless it's dairy, processed. How about dairy products? Unless it's processed. Meat. Dairy meat. Meat. You can't have any processed meats. Right. You can't, I can't have any processed. I can't have any herbs. Like, um, I, I, like I cleaned up my entire cabinet of herbs. The only thing that I, I use now is salt. A little bit of salt. No pepper. High in salicylates. Pepper mm -hmm. is. All herbs. Most herbs are high in salicylates. Um, so I can't see, you can't season anything. So you can't process anything because they put seasoning in it. So it's very hard for me to eat out because I can't, like, I can't eat olive oil. Olive oil high in salicylates. Um, just about everything I was eating. <laughs> coconut oil. Co all olive oil. Oh because it's in the skin of the olive when they press it out. I know. Isn't it crazy? The reason I mean, doctors don't tell is because either they don't know. They don't know. Or they don't. I know. They're, or they're not supposed to. Well, I think it's the best kept secret. And this is, this is my hypothesis. And maybe I'm wrong. I may be wrong. I don't know. I think Monsanto has genetically altered so many of our seeds. Oh, yeah. How would we grow enough food until we can get the heirloom seeds back that's not genetically altered? Until we get enough food to feed our country. Everything is genetically altered. Right. And so now it's like, okay, we've screwed up the seeds. How are we going to tell people that their arthritis, their fibromyalgia, their MS, their it's asthma, every, their psoriasis, and their headaches? Oh, listen, when I went on a no salicylate diet, or low as you can get, with just eating potatoes, cabbage, and um, what was the other thing I ate? Broth. 
the broth with I ate potatoes, cabbage, rice. and rice. I, I used the wild rice. And I would change it, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the potatoes, and cook a little bit of in each one. I'd have them cooked up and mix it up, and that's what I ate. Barbara ate it for six weeks. I ate it for about a month, and I still eat it. I mean, I still will the supplement it. Cabbage doesn't have it. Hmm? You said cabbage doesn't have it? Cabbage has some. But oh, see, low amounts. But I, Brussels sprouts with the But see, you, um, you break off the big, thick leaves on the outside, and that's where most of the salicylates are. Mm -hmm. And okay. then, you know, cabbage, and, but cabbage doesn't Maybe have a lot. the cruciferous, the cruciferous vegetables yeah. have low amounts? Okay. Well, well, it's concentrated in one place on the outside. So when see, you normally okay. prepare those things, this is my list. Outside, this is my Bible right here. This is what I have to live by now. Can you share that? This is all the list. Oh, it's on that website. You can oh. print it off. Thank you. This is all the, the ones that I can't eat right here. These all these. These are the fruits I can eat. And these I can eat sometimes. But mostly I just try and stick with the bananas, pears, mm -hmm. limes. And that's better. I'll eat an apple, because apples low. And but tomatoes, high, high in salicylates. I haven't eaten a tomato. In fact, that's probably what pushed me over the edge too. I shouldn't have eat it. It's been over a year and a half since I had any tomatoes. And my sister-in-law, I love her lasagna, and she fixed lasagna, and so I ate a piece of lasagna, and it was starting to build up, build up, and then when I drank that drink, it just, my whole face broke out. I said, oh, great, I've got to go teach tomorrow, and I look like I've been in a fight. Have you ever had colonics? Excuse me? Have you ever had colonics? Uh-uh. No. That no. empties the barrel. Yeah, and it the does. the barrels are full, in other but words, see, I... parts of your body that store this... Yeah. So it's like you empty them, then they, your tolerance for it goes up. You're more tolerant. You don't have, but 90% of the population or more, 95% of the population has never had one clone. Yeah. I, I had, I tell you what, when I started doing the bone marrow soup, I had, I had had an IBS for about 10 years. What is it? IBS. What is Irritable bowel syndrome. Oh. It's bad. I couldn't leave the house. Unless, I, well, I definitely didn't leave the house in the mornings. I'd make appointments for later in the evening because by then I might be able to leave the house. My IBS went away. I have an IBS since I went on the bone marrow suit. My twin, like I told you, she had really bad headaches. She had had a head, she'd had headaches for over 30 years. And if my twin went one day in one year without a headache, that was a good year. She never was without a headache, ever. She woke up with it in the morning. She went to bed with it at night. And she'd have two or three different kinds of headaches. And sometimes it'd just lay her low. She couldn't even get out of bed. But most of the time she could deal with it because she learned to deal with the pain. Her headaches went away. She doesn't have headaches anymore. Brenda, I was going to ask now, if you cleaned your system out like you did of all your, or most of your salicylates, the salicylates, mm -hmm. then, and you take those supplements, couldn't you eat for a while anything you wanted until you built up again and then you would get your symptoms and no. and then are also some people much I don't more know. sensitive Maybe other people are different Maybe because i became salicylate sensitive now now you like just, i said you're just super sensitive is that I'm it super right now? sensitive you're so, but not everybody is not no. everybody is yeah. Yeah, everybody may not you know they may not be like me mm -hmm. I, I only know me i only know my twin but me and her aware are the same way. a lot of people like that I think it's great that you're making us aware of it because there's so many people that they have, don't even know about salicylates. Right, and I've had moments in my life where I've had things like that. Yeah, yeah, you and, know, you know, that's why. Um, I mean, the things that most of what we were eating, Barbara and I, was eating, like, like I said, the only seasoning that I need to eat is golden syrup, malt vinegar, and salt, and all of these, everything, is high in salicylates. So, you know, I, I recommend that you print this out. If you know anybody who's sick with uh, any of the things that are listed on that paper, you know, yeah. let them uh, go to the website, check it out. It may not be that, but you know what? It's worth a try. Yeah. And I told several people about it, they've done it, and their symptoms have went away. So, anyway, let me, um, okay, this is my other, I'm gonna let, my sweetheart over here hangs out. <coughs> Sam, <coughs> that way I don't have to go around. I mean, let me keep one. Okay, this is my this is my formula. 
God brought me this years and years ago. The, the first one is my Epsom salt formula that I soak my feet in. These, Dr. Pennewell says that if you will soak your feet for 30 minutes, it will draw out so many toxins out of your body. Thank you, darling. And you can save the water and use it the next night. You know, the toxins aren't going to go back in you. <laughs> you can pull the toxins out. Save the water. Okay, my second, my pain formula. This has been like a miracle. My daughter hurt her back about five years ago now, and they wanted to do surgery. Well, I also injured my back about 20 years ago, and Dennis, with the bone marrow, you know, he still has the, it's still attacking those puncture wounds, and his, across his backside would be really inflamed. It'd be really hot, like he had infection in there. Since I started using this pain formula, the castor oil, the tea tree, and the lavender, my grandmother used to use castor oil and rub it on grandpa's shoulders, on his back, because he was a farmer. Um, it's amazing. It really is. Let me tell you what is even better. And I couldn't find my book. The name of the book is Be Your Own Doctor. It was written by a an, uh, Mennonite woman and I bought it here in, in uh, Bainbridge. Bainbridge. I bought it in Bainbridge years ago. And this formula was in there. And I have used it several times as far as, I take my castor oil formula. This is activated charcoal. That's what they give you if you uh, overdose or you go in the hospital and you get food poisoning. I take the activated charcoal, we bought it by the pound, this doesn't weigh anything. See, the barber's pound was like twice as much. And I just took some of it. I took, I take some of this, I, it's messy, so put it in a, a glove. Unless you want your fingernails black. I put, pour the castor oil on my hand. I put that um, activated charcoal in it. I mix it up really good. And I put it on a, a cloth that is cotton. And you can buy them organic if it's possible. If I can't, if I don't have that, I use a, a wash rag. Just a white wash rag. It's been washed a thousand times, so I figure it's about as organic as you can get. There's nothing left. <laughs> but how I know it works, and I mix it together, and I put it on that, and I put it on whatever problem I'm having. I had strep throat. Now, I've never had strep throat before. And, but I know it was strep because I couldn't hardly swallow it. I was spitting. I said, well, this is just great. I can't take antibiotics because I took one antibiotic pill and went anaphylactic. Every medication that I've taken for the last, one threw me into, one, I was anaphylactic, one threw me into a coma. So I can't take medication the way most people do. So I have to find something else. So I put that on my throat and I wrapped it with the, the, the saran wrap. I took a hair dryer and I heated it up to where it would, you know, activate and start working. If I hadn't have felt it and hadn't experienced it, I wouldn't have believed it. Within two hours, my strep was gone. We were at one of the resorts last year, and I fell, and I thought I broke my foot. And I'm like, just great. We were just getting ready to go to, to, to the next resort, and I said, I'm not going to sit in the ER right now for five hours. We'll go to the next resort. I put my formula on there, wrapped it up really good, put an ace bandage on it, wrapped it up, and I could barely walk on it. I thought, great, I had broke something, or torn something or something. That night, we got to the resort. That night, I did the same thing. Dennis wrapped it for me. I said, tomorrow morning, first thing, I will get up early, about 4 o'clock, beat the rush into the ER, and if it's not better. I took it off, and my foot was complete. The swelling was gone. It was healed. I have told people about it. They've injured their knees. Is this on your website, the formula? Huh? Is this on your website, the formula? Uh-uh. So is it no. just castor oil and charcoal? Activated okay. charcoal. Yeah, no, yeah. no, unfortunately. My, this website here that I, I gave y'all, this one here that says oil-testimonials.com, yeah. 
This has 10,000 testimonials on it. This wow. doesn't sell any oils. This is a non, you know, they, they don't advocate any certain oil, like doTERRA, Young Living, Nature Sunshine. They tell you get a good oil. You get what you pay for, okay? You really do. You get what you pay for. So, um, but this has, you can type in, just like my daughter-in-law, she had kidney stones. And I'm like, she called me, she said, what are we gonna do? I'm like, let's go on the website. Let's see what oil. So she went on, we went on the website. She had five kidney stones, she passed one. And they told her, I've, I've got four more I have to pass and I can't do it. It was worse than having a baby. She's like, I cannot do that four more times. There was a guy on there who had kidney stones for 50 years. Aren't they from uric lemon acid? Lemon oil. Yeah. Lemon oil dissolved his kidney stones. He never had kidney stones again. He drank three drops of lemon oil every day, and it would dissolve the kidney stones before they ever started. So she followed his formula that's on the website. Like I said, I don't even know what it is because she's the one that did it. Since I had the brain bleed, it's hard for me to remember things. So I have to have props. But um, if you're going to get a block, it smells really pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And he's out for the day. And then you can come back and get these, okay? Green Star has it. Yeah. 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 It smells wonderful. And Wagman's too, right? Thank you. And then that one. The one of those. Okay. And you can and you just hand one of these out. <laughs> oh what that bowl smells wonderful. Okay. okay, babe, you can give her one give one of these. These are the 20 most used essential oils from Young Living. I don't advocate Young Living unless you want to. You know, if you want to use Young Living, that's great. If you want to buy from my website, that's great. I don't do this for money. I do this because it's a calling and it's my ministry. Well, you don't, don't advocate Young Living or you don't want to talk about that? I don't advocate Young Living. I don't expect people to buy just from Young Living. I yeah, see. yeah. Right. I mean, exactly. and okay. whatever profit I get, I put back into okay. my life. But now I do advocate Barbara and Kevin Coons. They had the most amazing books. This is this is the um, the people I study. Get you a really good book on reflexology. Okay, this is um, this is for children. It's the best gift you'll ever give your children or your grandchildren. My, um, I had a, this lady that I taught, oh gosh, probably 15, 16 years ago, um, reflexology. And her, she was going through a really hard time with her door. She was like 12 years old. That, they were just always butting heads. And she told me a few years later, she said, Brenda, when we couldn't even talk to, her, to each other, I'd be sitting on the couch, and she'd come and lay down on the couch and put her feet in my lap. And she'd say, Mama, would you do a reflexology session with me? I get chill bumps when I think about it. She said it connected us when we couldn't even talk to each other. And so I tell people reflexology on so many levels does so much. Dennis and I used to be house parents at a children's home, and we had like 12 small children that we took care of. And they would, the little ones would come and say, and put their feet up, lay in the couch and put their feet up, and I'd do reflexology on them and put what oils on them. And most people don't like tea tree oil. They say it's really strong. I, I do too, but you know what? So many people don't like it. But these babies, these small children, loved it. I, I don't, I think that their smell wasn't adulterated the way ours is to always expect everything to smell sweet and everything and tea tree doesn't smell su sweet. But Dr. Pennywell says, if you never use another oil besides tea tree and lavender, you would never need another oil. Mm -hmm. 
that they become, and this is the beauty of the oils, and I tell people this about the oils. Carrots are good for your eyes. Dr. Pinnerell says, he advocates food too. Have you ever cut a carrot in half and you see on the inside it looks like an eye, an iris? That's because it's good for your eyes. And, but the nutrients that's in that carrot is good for everything else too. So Dr. Pinnerell says uh, tea tree is antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. It covers everything. And if, um, but get a good tea tree oil, okay? Don't just buy something off the shelf. Make sure, check into it, find out how good it is. I buy Young Living because that's where God took me. And that's the oils. And I, I do buy some, this is my formula that I fixed up just yesterday. My castor oil formula that I made. Uh, and I put refuge in it, which is a calming blend. And this has been amazing to watch my mother-in-law, who's in a hospital bed in the living room. And she gets agitated. I can anoint her with two drops of this oil, and she just calms right down. What's the name of it? It's called Refuge. It's from Nature Sunshine. It's called a calming blend. Um, I put the tea tree and the refuge in this much essential oil. And we'll use this much, what, maybe in a couple of months? Two, three months will last us because we use it all the time and sometimes I give it away. So, you know, you know how that is, people say. Okay, there's one other thing that I wanted to make people aware of. And that is, has anybody ever heard of the kissing bug? Kissing bug? Yeah. Kissing bug from Brazil? Okay. I know that that was the original name. It was a kissing boat from Brazil because it originated there. Well, I got bit by the kissing boat. And um, what it does, it, this, the doctor explained to me, when it bites you, it infects you with a bacterial infection. And that infection goes to different parts of your body. A lot of times it goes to your heart. I was lucky it went to my esophagus. And it when he said when your your own immune system will kill it, the bacterial infection eventually. And when it dies, it lets off a poison and it atrophies that muscle. Well it atrophied my esophagus. So halfway down my esophagus was smaller than a pencil. Your pencils for y'all. When you reflex all of your pencil. You want to hand everybody a pencil out? My esophagus, I mean, I did that bearing swallow and I looked at it, my esophagus was like this big, and then all of a sudden it got to something smaller than a pencil. Well, about a month ago, finally I'd been going to doctors for about, I think it's been going on for a year. I thought it was from the salicylates. I thought maybe I was having acid reflux, and the acid reflux was causing that. Well, I went to two doctors, specialists, and they stretched my esophagus. What makes me upset is when I went for the barium swallow before I went to do my first stretching esophagus, the guy that did the, the doctor that did the barium swallow looked at my, he, he let me see it. And it was like the esophagus was that wide and then all of a sudden it goes down to smaller than a pencil. And I'm like, and he looked at me and he said, I have never seen anything like this before. Well, those two doctors probably had never seen it either. And they just assumed that I needed my esophagus stretched. But the next day, after they, they stretched my esophagus, I still couldn't eat any better. I mean, I, was, I couldn't get food down. I was throwing up water and I, I lost like 10 pounds during that time, 10 pounds the, the before with the salicylates and 10 more pounds with the esophagus. So I'm down about 20 pounds now. But um, finally went to a doctor. I said, well, I'm not having my esophagus stretched again. It's not working. We have to think for ourselves a lot of times. We can't just automatically let the doctor think for us. I got to thinking like, okay, everybody else is telling me when they stretch their esophagus, 
the food just fell right into their stomach and it was wonderful and they could eat. When I come out of um, the anesthesia, I couldn't eat. I couldn't, I couldn't eat like that the next day. And so it had to be something different. So I tell people, so I finally found a doctor who was a doctor um, who had been an army doctor and he worked for NASA. And God just led me to this guy. He just led me. And he's like, I know what it is. And it, it's Chagas. Chagas disease is what it's called. And he, and he said, I, all my years of practice, I've only seen like four people that's had this. You know, it's like one in 10 million. And so I'm like, well, that's just great. I'm one in 10 million. But anyway, they were able to fix it. They had to cut my esophagus and wrap my stomach around like they do someone who wants to lose weight. Now my stomach is half the size it was. So I tell people that because if the doctors tell you something and your gut feeling is that's not what it is, then keep looking. Don't just accept what the doctors, I'm not saying don't go to a doctor because now I'm going to be the first one to go to a doctor because I'm going to figure out what's wrong. If there's something wrong, I'm going to know there's something wrong. And I'm blessed. I don't take any prescriptions. I don't have any medicine. I'm very blessed. But if I needed it, I would take it. And if I needed to go to a doctor, I would go. There's nothing else but for a blood workup so I could find out what's wrong. But if the doctor tells you something and your gut feeling is that's not what it is, then keep looking. Try and find something. And if you will search, at least this has been my, my uh, experience, if I will truly search, God will bring me to what I need to find. And he has through every illness that I've had, through allergies, serious allergies, to going anaphylactic allergies, to um, a heart condition that needed surgery, kidneys. I'm now in stage three kidney failure. And, um, huh? yeah, I just found out about, well, I found out right before they did the surgery. I'm in stage three kidney failure. Now, what surgery did you have done? I had my esophagus cut where, and they wrapped my stomach around the esophagus to where, and sewed it, tacked it to the esophagus so that the food wouldn't come back up and my stomach would close because my esophagus can't anymore because there's no muscle there. And because that part of my esophagus was like dead, half my esophagus. So, um, just yeah. From I mean, the argument, the point you just made about when doctors tell you something, even when doctors order a test. I was listening to Pete the People's Pharmacy this morning on NPR. Did you ever hear that? Mm -hmm. And they said on that show this morning that just because the test tells you or tells the doctor something, remember, it it's the test telling you. Right. It's not the doctor, it's the test. Well, you know, I have always had problems with my kidneys. I don't know if it was the Chagas, the, the kissing bug that caused it. Barbara, my twin, said that she thinks it might be the kissing bug that caused it. Um, I don't know if that's what it is, but I do know that I'm gonna find something that will bring my kidneys back. Sure. Because my Chinese uh, teacher said, you're only as young as your kidneys. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm gonna find, and, and I have, I went on my, um, I'm taking cordyceps. So they just told you you had first stage. Yeah. That doesn't mean my you doctor. can't take it to second stage. And I can bring it back. Right? Bring it back. I can bring it back. Right. In fact, cordyceps is supposed to, um, this is a fungus basically, that's out of China, that it's the weirdest thing, is it? it's a fungus. When this, oh, I this, I yeah, this grub worm goes into the ground, oh, that's amazing. and fungus goes around it, and when they dig it up, the fungus looks like the worm, and then they grind it up, and that's the cordyceps. Wow. So cordyceps is supposed to reverse kidney failure. It's great for joints. So it's probably good for everything. Yeah. I certainly need it. It's good for circulation. Remember, a, a, what was it that they got so many medals? It was Chinese uh, women got so many medals. It was, uh, you remember some of the years? And they said it was because of taking cordyceps. Remember? Yeah, this is, this is totally legal. 
And so they said that it was from taking cordyceps. I think it was track and field that they got so many gold medals, which they had never done before. I had this little book on cordyceps, and I carried it around for years and never read it. And then finally I picked it up one day, and I read the, it's just a you thing know, about this uh -huh. book. And I, I couldn't believe it. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? So I take nine of these a day. I've been taking it ever since I found out I have kidney failure. And um, I don't have any symptoms yet, except my eyes. And that's something else I didn't bring y'all. Oh my gosh. Can I see that bottle? Mm -hmm. And garlic is good for your kids. Is mean, it? Yeah. So you garlic? Know, you know the nodules or whatever is in the mm -hmm. center of the little things in the center of the kidney? It restores them to homostasis. It brings right. them back to what they were when you were a child. Wow. Before you had I'll have to try the garlic. Uh, oh, lots it? of garlic. And make sure you grow your own. Yeah. You grow, grow, grow garlic make all year sure. round. You can use tools, and I highly recommend tools when you're doing reflexology, okay? As I was start. saying earlier to some of the ladies, reflexology is very hard on your hands, especially your thumbs, you know? And you don't want to do like my, my sister's getting ready to have, my baby sister has a trigger finger, and she's getting ready to have surgery on it because it, um, it locks. And, you know, now it's starting to fit the rest of her hand, so she's got to have surgery. And so I tell people, okay, but the one thing I tell them, don't use. Do not use any massage oil on your feet when you're doing reflexology. And let me tell you why. Now, some women, some reflexologists do, and the reason they do is to save their hands. Because it, but, like my teacher said, um, you have 8,000 nerve endings on your feet. If you're just going to do yourself, look at the bottom of my feet. They're so dirty. I, you're you're dirty. I know, I'm a mom girl, that's for sure. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't wear shoes, and, that's, and I have to bleach my feet because they get so dirty. But I, I brought something to wash my feet with. <laughs> but take, take this, and you can buy these from Bed Bath & Beyond. These are great. Or what do you call them? Anything? They're just little. They're little nodules on this. It's it, that's what it's for, really. And this is great too, just to rub in a big area. She's got tennis balls. One of the best things you can use yeah. is a a golf ball. Use a golf ball because it's hard. It has those little ridges. You know, the, the little. It's not completely round. It has the little things. The golf balls do. Round, round dumbbells. Yeah, right? yeah. Right on the bar, you can roll them on the bar. A bolo is really good because you, you can hold it and press, injure your feet. And when you're there doing, oh, I was going to show y'all this too. This is the where I broke out with the salicylates. That top picture is where you can just pass it around. Look at it and pass it around. The top picture is where my sister broke out in shingles. Mm -hmm. And the reason she didn't break out any more than that is oh. you, you were saying, you just pass it around. We already did. Oh, you already looked yeah. at it. Okay. The top picture is shingles. My sister, that's all she broke out on her arm. You know why? We always grab the oils. If we, something that we get a bite or anything, and she thought something that bit her. So she got the fees and she started putting it on. And but she started feeling her arm by the time at night it would be real heavy. And shingles does that, you feel like. And she's, she told her husband after two or three days and he's like, it sounds like shingles to me. So she went to her doctor and sure enough it was shingles. They tested her and they, yeah, so they give her all the medicine, you know, they give you for shingles, the dry man and everything. She never even got it filled. She come home, she started keep putting the thieves on there several times a day. And that's all she ever broke out. So, I tell people, let the oils be your first line of defense. I always let the oils, reflexology, my food, become my first line of defense. And then, if I can't, because now I tried to cure my esophagus. I went to acupuncturist twice a week. I was going to a chiropractor. I was using oils and the, the reflexology and herbs, and nothing worked. I did that for six months. I did that for almost a year. Kombucha. Kombucha. That's what broke me out. Kombucha. 
Okay, so it was the fermentator. No, oh no, because I, 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 I was telling them, I broke out yesterday from the salicylates. The kombucha I happened to buy had cherry and blueberry in it, oh, okay. and I didn't realize it had that much. Yeah. I drank it, by the time I drank it, my whole neck was red, my face was completely broke out in highs. I got home and had to take Benadryl to dry everything in, because I, I really would have looked great. I was fast on the road to esophageal cancer. It was that bad. I was in the chronic state, not not degenerative yet, not acute. Not acute as first, then chronic, then degenerative. I was in the, the, the um, chronic state, and it was so bad, and I did like, how many cases of kombucha? But I did the original. Uh -huh. I didn't have the flavor. Right, you didn't have the... Took it away. I mean, I mean, three months, it was gone. No esophageal discomfort at all. Is it like berries? It's... It's the, the mushrooms. It's yeah. The, the, like cordyceps. It's the, it, it's the yeah. mushrooms. Yeah. And cordyceps is mushrooms? Yeah, well, that's, that's what, what it is. It's I'm mushrooms. Fungus, it's, yeah. it's a fungus, like, okay. Uh, okay. like a mushroom, and they grind it up, and th what it does is it ingest the worm okay the the little the it's not a worm what is it grub. yeah a grub a grub, uh, a grub yeah. worm that goes down in the Digest ground it. forms around it digests it and eats it and then that's what forms it and then they grind it up yeah. very expensive in china when you dig it up out of the ground how much is that bottle about that you oh i don't know i like just 30, bought 30, 30, 25 yeah. see i buy everything wholesale uh -huh. so it was like Twenty dollars, I guess, for the and bottle for me. Cause I, but I bought four hundred dollars worth at one time. How much do you take when a I day? Out, I had um, I had stage three kidney, and I looked up my book, and it said this would reverse it. Right. So I started on it nine, right. a, day. nine, nine a, a day. Nine a day. Nine a day. Nine a day. At four. once, or do you three, spread it three, out? Three, three, three times a day. Three, 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 three. And um, and I, when I get back, then I'll let my doctor check me again, check my blood. And I've already got an appointment set up when I get back to South Carolina, and then um, we'll see if it's helping. Are you, you finding know? a doctor that will work with you? Because like, you're not doing conventional. Conventional. Right. So you want to find a doctor that is aware and sensitive to your needs. And well, it's sometimes hard. Sometimes yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, my doctor, my doctor is a conventional doctor. Right. And she will. She will work with me. One time she told me, she said, Brenda, are you going to ever do anything I tell you? <laughs> I said, probably not, but you can keep suggesting. It's a good sign when you hear because, that. She still says, because I look things up and I, I bring things to her and tell her, you know, this right. is what I'm doing. This is what I'm trying. You're she teaching says, her too. She's like, Brenda, if it works, do it. Yeah. But she, she's not one to basically tell me, no, because it wouldn't, she knows it wouldn't do any good anyway. I'm going to do what I think is best for my body. And I tell people, fight, because I had Lyme disease. About 20 years ago, I contracted Lyme. And 20 years ago, they didn't give you six weeks of antibiotics for Lyme. They only gave you three weeks. Well, that was another God thing. I got Lyme, got the diagnosis, and, it was, and, and I called this uh, company that I was buying his vitamins from, and uh, both our vitamins, trying to get him healthy because he was so sick. And I said, what can I do for Lyme? And she's like, the president of the Lyme Disease Council is one of our clients. Would you like his phone number? He said anybody could call him. And so I called him, talked to him, and he's like, Brenda, they're only going to want to give you three weeks of antibiotics. We, the Lyme Disease Council is tens of thousands of people who have Lyme that have come together and they're trying to help each other out. And that was back 20 years ago when people, they didn't have that much information about it. And so he's like, you've got to have six weeks of antibiotics or it will not kill the Lyme in the gestation period. You're lucky you caught it so soon. And so I went to the doctor and I says, I need six weeks of antibiotics. And I told him what the guy said. And he's like, no, you can only have three. I said, but I want six. And he's like, you can't have six. And I'm like, and I argued with him for about 10 minutes. I said, fine, give me three. I'm going to get diagnosed with another doctor and I'll get three weeks from him. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, he says, you're serious. I said, as a heart attack. I said, it's my body. If I want to take six weeks of antibiotics, I should be able to. And he's like, he wasn't happy with me at all. 
And he said, fine, I'll give you your six weeks. He said, but you're going to have some serious side effects. I thought, it couldn't be any worse than you are. But anyway, I said, um, I didn't because I took, I took my vitamins and I took my digestive enzymes and I took my probiotics and I took everything I needed to take along with my uh, diflucan, along with my antibiotics. So I, I wouldn't have all those problems. And um, my daughter got Lyme two years ago. Guess how many weeks of antibiotics they gave her? Three or six. Two months. Six. Yeah. yeah. Six weeks of antibiotics now. They finally decided, yes, you do need six weeks of antibiotics. He said if you only take three, it kills the weak ones. The body, the rest of them go into hibernation. They come back in a year and you never get rid of them. You'll never get, like Venice's virus, you'll never be able to kill them. So you'll always be fighting the symptoms of Lyme. Mm -hmm. I was blessed. That was another God thing. I was supposed to say, God always brings healing into my life. But I keep looking, and I fight. I fight for what I want. And if I want it, and I feel like I really need to do it, then I do it. And I think people, that's what I tell people too. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Keep looking. God will bring something into your life. Keep looking. And... Do reflexology. Okay, let's do some reflexology. Okay, I want you. Excuse me. Would you show me how to use that? How you <coughs> use that wine glass-looking blue? This. Yeah. How, how is that? That's kind of a massage thing that it's you go up and down the spine. Oh, it's more not or less. The yeah. of the foot but or? you know, I use it on for reflexology too. I'll take it and do like this. Yes. Oh, but basically it's for the spine. It's this is this is massaging the spine. Ah. Uh, Dr. Pennywell believes that all viruses and all disease go up and down the spinal fluid. And there was something I wanted to tell you. Raindrop therapy. This is how I know that raindrop therapy works. He had injured his shoulder, what was it, about 15 years ago, 17 years ago? 20 years ago, he injured his shoulder. And they wanted to do rotary cup surgery on it. And he's like popping his shoulder like this all the time, and it's popping and popping. And I, for years, they wanted to do surgery. And he's like, I don't have time for surgery. You know, it takes a long time to get over it. It's a major surgery. I don't have time. And so I've been putting the oils on his shoulders. And I told him, I said, one day, your shoulder's going to fall out of the joint. And I guess you'll go have surgery then, won't you? So, but I started doing, I wasn't doing, when I found out that viruses go up and down the spine, I thought, well, let me do a raindrop on him. Maybe that'll help kill the virus. So I started doing, I did this kit, which cost about $125 wholesale. Um, we'll do about six sessions of raindrop. And I did one kit on him and he healed his rotary cuff. He never had that surgery. That's an amazing therapy. It is. Have you ever had it done? I haven't had it done. I've done it. Before. You should. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It really is. My daughter has, like I said, she injured her back a long time ago, about five years ago. They wanted to do surgery. Gave her a 50% chance of being in a wheelchair if she had it. And she uses the castor oil formula on her back all the time has never had to have surgery. She said, I can't do that, Mom. I'm only 45 years old. I can't have be in a wheelchair. And so um, she she's taking care of her three grandchildren now. They're seven, seven, four, and um, three months. She's been taking care of him since he was born. And she's been over to pick this baby who's, he's about six months now, 18 pounds, and she met, hurt her back again. And so I called her, I'm like, what's going on? She says, well, I can't even turn over. She said, mom, I've messed it up bad this time. She says, I can't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I can't even get turn over in the bed. And I said, okay, I can't be there. She's in South Carolina, but Barbara, I said, Barbara will come do a session on you. No, Mom, don't, don't, don't tell her to come do it. I can't even turn over. I said, it doesn't matter. I've done it on pregnant women that they can't even lay on their stomach. You just do it up and down the back. 
you know, roll over on your side a little bit, do it on the, and do it on the feet. You also do light reflexology. You do the raindrop on the feet before you start on the back. What is the raindrop? It's nine essential oils in this kit. There are nine essential oils in here. And um, you do reflexology kind of on the feet before you start doing the nine down the back. And if you decide you want to do it, this is what I did. That's perfect for you. Got a DVD that was well, you can buy a DVD, but this, this helps me more than anything. I just made it up myself because after the brain bleed, I couldn't remember which oil went next and how many drops and what I needed to do. So It helps you as much as it helps the person you're doing it for. It does. When you give, a, as we say in reflexology, when you give a session, you get a session. And with raindrop, you give a session, you get a session because you also get the oils. But I just put my oils, uh, take the cap off, put my oils on there. You have oregano, thyme, basil, cypress, wintergreen. I can't pronounce that. You put it on a spine? Marjoram. I, I know it's, it's an herb. Okay. Yeah. Peppermint, valor, and then it has the um, massage oil that you massage the back. With it, with you it put it on your back, your spine? Your spine. And you, and then before it's so over with your entire back. You know, you, you massage the entire back. But it is truly amazing. Chiropractors do it here in New York. And they charge back, when I started doing it, 12, 10, 12 years ago, they were charging, uh, I asked a chiropractor, and he, they were charging $100 a session to do it. Yeah, about $100 a session to do it. But you can do it. I mean, you can't do it on yourself, but and you can do it on a partner. And, and you then you do so many people out of that one box. You can do six sessions. Six. Okay. Yeah, and it's about a hundred. So it's about twenty dollars a session, is what it cost me okay. to do it. Okay. It's the best twenty dollars you'll ever spend in your life. Can anybody just do it? Or do you have to be kind of? No, anybody can do it. Okay. So as long as you're not charging. Okay. Yeah, as long as you're not charging anybody. Donate. I mean, my my um, niece in law was about to lose her baby and she had had a spine she had scoliosis and had a rod up her spine and she really shouldn't have got pregnant the last time it was her fourth pregnancy and she you know it was hard on her to have um, a baby she was 35 at the time and uh, I thought she was going to lose the baby I started doing raindrop on her and she carried that baby she was already bedridden but she got to where she could get out of bed. But Carol, Barbara came over and did a session on Carol. Within two days, she was up taking care of the grandchildren again. And she, she, I, now when my daughter says she's in pain, it's bad. Because now my daughter is the highest pain tolerance of anybody I've ever known in my life. That woman can take more pain than I've ever known anybody. You can do it with children too, right? Oh yeah, you can do it on kids too. Oh yeah, it's great for children. Great for children. Great for anybody so with back problems. I brought that because I totally forgot about that. Oh, this is so amazing. What a gift. You want to buy somebody something for Christmas? Buy them this and do it for them. That's a good idea. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is the greatest Christmas present ever. And just think about it. When you give it, them a session, you're getting one too. So... Just be great for your son. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just got into the CBD oils. Do you have any tea out of it? What do you think? But reflexology, let me get my reflexology. The hands are the easiest thing to do, okay? Have you ever wondered why? I only you know the current statistic for South Carolina that clearly people don't give their children turpentine or anymore. There was a study done in 2018 that one in three elementary school age children in South Carolina have some professional one. Book one, take one, something like that. Because they don't do the prophylaxis anymore. And they have a diet very high in sugar, which the worms love. Yep. Amazing. Um, the hands are the easiest to do. Because they're, you know, and that's the reason I, I let people, I show the hands, because they're, they're easily accessible, okay? Um, when you're doing reflexology, make sure you're supporting what, either your foot or your hand a lot. You don't, 
a lot of people don't realize that half the bones in your body are in your feet. Mm -hmm. And they're tiny bones. And there's a lot of bones in your, your hands. And the pressure that you put, you have to be careful. You don't want to break these bones. There's more Some bones people, in your thumb than any other part of your body. Is there really? Yes, small ones, really small. Small. Um, that's why I, I, I tell people to, you know, use tools if you want to. But make sure you're supporting. If you're going to use like a tool, make sure that you're, you got your hand on the surface. If it's not much your leg, to press into. Okay? You want to press into. And look on, on the diagram and look for the kidneys. Perfect example. I was doing a reflexology session on my daughter-in-law. And as I was walking up her spine, and your spine is right here in your feet, and as I was walking up that spine, I hit a spot that was really painful. And she says, wow, that hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. And after we got through with the session, I said, just a minute after she got up, I said, let me see if I can find that spot on your spine. So I started with my thumb walking up her spine, and when I hit that spot, it was painful. So, God never intended for us to wear shoes. Have you ever wondered if you stand for hours at a time, your feet swell a little bit, and they burn? Have you ever wondered why it does that? That's toxins. Gravity is pulling the toxins down into our feet. God never intended for us to wear shoes. He intended for us to wear soft moc uh, moccasins or go barefooted. Because when you walk across the ground um, and you walk on sand or rocks, you're naturally reflexing your feet. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked me the other day, I was going outside, running outside for something, and, and she's like, you're, you're going barefooted? I said, yeah, I'm always barefooted. And she's like, you've never cut your foot? Yeah. I said, never. I have never cut my feet. And let me tell you why. But they're tough. They're tough, but also... I'm always looking down because I always go barefooted. And when most people are looking ahead of them, well, my twin, bless her heart, has injured both her Achilles tendons, broke her foot, twisted her ankle. As Tommy says, she never looks where she's going. I said, if she'd go barefooted, she would look where she's going. Because if you go barefooted, you're naturally looking down because you don't want to step on anything. And you, you got to look and see where you're stepping. And when, when I walk, I'm always looking down. I may run into something with my head, but I'm not going to step on anything. <laughs> so that's naturally reflexing your feet. And if you will soak your feet in the Epsom salt, and then uh, it's better to work on your feet for 15 minutes and then soak them. Okay? Because the reflexology will open your feet up, and the soaking will pull out all the toxins, and then... Um, your feet will not feel that, that, like they're swollen and they're tingling, they'll feel great. And you can do it on yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I, I do that at night. So yeah. I, I work yeah. on, like, if I have problems, you sleep, like, like Dennis gets gout, I can cure gout like that. Really? Oh, yeah. Gout, I can tell, in fact, I work on his, his toes every night to make sure he doesn't get gout because it's right here in the crystals form right here in that toe and I take and I do this. The big toes. Um, ten times one way, ten times another way. And that wow. and I do each toe that way. And I work each one of his toes. And I only spend now my teacher told me about this. This is one of the best things you can do. She, when she first started doing reflexology, that was when AIDS first came out. So she started volunteering at an AIDS clinic. And she was like, there was a woman, beautiful woman from Long Island, she said, who had contracted AIDS from a transfusion, blood transfusion. And she's like, I'm in such bad shape, I can't even walk on the beach. She's like, what can I do for myself? And my teacher's like, I just started reflexology. I didn't know what to tell her. She's like, I told her to do this. Back and forth, up and down, because your lymph nodes are across the top, right here, the top of your foot. That's where your lymph nodes are. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And then draw circles with your feet, like this. Around, draw circles this way, 
go back and draw circles the other way. And so this woman come back to her in two weeks, and she said she looked like a different person. She's like, for the first time in like a year, I'm able to walk on the beach. And she's like, I am so much better just from doing that. If you don't, and your hands, you can do the same thing with your hands. Go like this, back and forth, and then draw circles with your hands. You just do them back this way. And up and down, and around and around. If your feet feel like they're swollen, do this. You know how the doctors, I don't know, they don't, they don't do it anymore, but they used to when I was a child. They would, if you were sick, they would check your groin right here. Yeah, that's right. And you got lymph nodes in your groin. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got lymph nodes up here. That's right. You got lymph nodes in your, let me show you something else, a little cranial sacral that I learned. If you got a headache, or if you, your head just feels funny, take and hold your head and take your thumbs and put them up under your skull, right there at the bottom of your skull, and you press as hard as you can. And you walk your thumbs, do some reflexology. I was at church one day, and a woman came up to me and she said, my daughter has had a migraine for three days, and she can't get rid of it. Is there anything you can do? So I did that. I'm going to show each one of you. I'm going to walk around and show each one of you. Because I want you to learn it and teach it. There you go, just like that, OK? If you don't want me to do it, that's fine. Just tell me. Very Is that painful? <laughs> that's your lymph nodes. You have lymph nodes in that area, too. I've actually had that work done, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. so, separate? No. Okay. But if you've got a headache, it's going to hurt a lot. Yeah. Because, anyway, I anointed her neck and that area with peppermint oil. Great for headaches. Get rid of a headache. If he starts having a migraine, I put this on it. I start working that area. On your temple, maybe, with peppermint oil? No. Oh. Do not put peppermint oil near your fa your eyes. Okay. Back here. That's right. Back here. Mm -hmm. Right here. Oh, right there. Oh, it's right. more toward the back. Oils, different right. Right. I was on the bone more. No, up under. Up you, under. You're the going bone. up under. Oh, okay. okay. So I always get this Thank headache you. right across here. Okay. So that makes sense. Oh, just like that. Because a lot of times people don't realize exactly where it's at. Okay? Just walk just like that. Wait. How do you do the hands? What did you do? And they think prayer came from reflexology. Oh. Yeah. They do. They think prayer came from reflexology. So anyway, my, oh, my clothes are hanging on me. It's like I can't find the bug. Oh, I know. Uh, but your hands are the easiest. But let's face it now. We use our hands a lot, don't we? Yeah. yeah. So our hands get reflexed a lot more yeah. than our feet do because they're encased in shoes. And because gravity is pulling the toxins down, it's really better to do your feet than it is your hands. And um, so, you know, just, and I tip there, there are a lot of people that cannot pull their leg, their foot up in their, into their lap like this. And if they can't do that, I tell them, get something like this and just rub your feet across it like that. And if they've got a coffee table, believe it or not, see this doesn't have a sharp edge, you can take this right here and sit down and get just do your foot on it like that and press and press and press your foot. Digestive problems, you'll see, is the center of your right here. I have a very high arch. So people who have high arches a lot of time have digestive problems. And the reason they have digestive problems is because that never hits. And my arch is so high that it goes, in fact my, my reflexology teacher said she'd never seen anybody's foot like mine. My arch goes all the way across my foot. This side of my foot doesn't even touch. So all the way, and it's just my feet are built that way. 
my grandfather's was. When you do a footprint, it's not your full foot. It's oh, not. I don't right. have anything on the side because right. that's what we did in our class. Yeah, we used to do it in We school. did footprints, and she's like, "See, my 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 side doesn't hit it. So my same, arch same. goes all the way across, and bought, my twin does too. So, um, so where's the digestive again? Because I have digestive. A digestive is you see the stomach here, the intestines, oh, okay. the spleen. It's the center of your foot, yeah. and if you think about it that hits the least mm. you don't reflex and and you can make a reflex mat get you a carpet a long carpet if you want to make you a mat get the smoothed off stones and glue them to the carpet and walk across it and then okay. walk back oh. and then walk across it, it. The domes? domes you said no stones oh stones the little stones that are smoothed off you know or go find them, the, 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 I call them river rocks. River rocks, yeah. And just put them on there and glue them. In fact, I lived in Hawaii for a couple of years, and I was talking to this guy. And in Hawaii, it's, it's considered an insult to wear shoes in people's houses. Everybody takes their shoes off at the door. And he said in China and Japan, these Asian countries, he said there's a, it's concrete all in the front of the foyer and they have stones in there embedded into the concrete mm. and that is to welcome you and to basically give you healing and it's like it's reflexology you're just walking across those stones as you walk into their house nice. so okay. <laughs> it's it's considered but i've always thought you can make your own reflexology mat i mean you just get you a long piece of carpet and glue you some stones to it and just walk up and down it. Walk mm. back and forth. Or like a yoga mat. Or a yoga mat. That would yes. work. A yoga mat. Yoga. And, you know, make your own. And there are a lot of ways to do reflexology. Um, what chair has a run on it? This one does. You have a high arch, too. This one does. Yeah. Okay. You can take this. Take a chair. I take a coffee table, it's great. But you can take a chair, and you can take this. If it's rounded, it's a little bit better, but it doesn't matter. It's not bad. I kind of like this. And you take your feet and press, and walk your feet up and down that rung, just like that. And I was doing that this morning with the barbell. Have you ever noticed a dog or a cat? And they'll do oh, yeah. it. They're doing that a lot of times, especially cats. cats yeah. They're mm -hmm. doing that. So do you touch uh, all different parts of your foot on the rung? Yeah. And then if I, if, if I got hip problems, I'll do it on the side. If I've got spine problems, I'll turn it on this side and work up and down. If you can save your hands, save your hands. Yeah. Um, because our hands get worked out a lot. <laughs> I was, and uh, a lot of people have arthritis. I did reflexology. I went to school for it, but I stopped 10 years ago because my hands are all like the yeah. hurts, and I really yeah. miss it. It's really difficult. It, it is a hard It is difficult. Yeah. But could you make you a, re a reflexology mat. Teach people how to do reflex. Yeah, your tips are excellent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you know, and probably God is giving you a gift for it. So. Feel free to pick any tip I have. A lot of these are ones that I've, um, nobody's taught me, they just kind of come to me. Where do you get these things? You can bed, bath, and beyond, any kind of, you know, places like that. If I go to thrift shops, I pick them up. A lot of times people get rid of them. Um, you can buy the, the wooden ones that you can run your feet over. I tell you what's really good too. Now, if you're going to use a foot soaker to soak your feet, do not plug it in. I cut the cord off a very foot soaker. If I give one, I buy them and give them to people. The electricity, our body has frequency, and the electricity that's in that foot soaker is against the frequency of our body. Like the electric blankets as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I would never advocate for electric blankets. Get your, get your hot water bottle, you know, the old way. 
Just get you a hot water bottle, a couple, or better than that, get you a couple of dogs. You know, they'll keep you warm. That's where three dog nights come from. It's, it's so cold, we need three dogs in the bed tonight. So, um, in the South, that's what we do. Pile the dogs I in the bed. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> dogs. <laughs> but, um, if you... Local source, to some of these things, like the massaging devices or the CBD oil, is uh, an excellent shop as soon as you go under the archway and on this street, Main Street, you're crossing the Johnson City. It's a uh, natural foods uh, health store. Oh, the yeah, Johnson City. Health, health Beat. That's it. <coughs> oh, yeah. You got some good stuff there. They sell it? Oh, wow. <coughs> and that might be good quality. Mm -hmm. Health Beat. She's. Yeah, I think. But if, yeah. if, you, if you're working on your feet, and you find pain. If, you, if you're working, if you're taking you have this little tool, and you're working, and you start working up your spine, and you feel pain in that area, like I always have pain in my hip area, always. I always have pain all over my body. I always have pain here when I do My it. feet, him, I've been working on his feet so long until he doesn't have any pain anywhere on his feet. But I always have pain. All of it doesn't matter. I, my heels don't hurt, <laughs> and I think that's only because uh, they're so tough from me going barefooted so much. But I can go up my spine, and I have pain, especially my hips, um, my female reproductive organs. I can work my kidneys. I'm, I'm having problems. I've always had kidney problems, and I can. Um, but you know, God brings healing into our life. And we just have to take, I don't, tr I try not to take medication. This is my philosophy, because I have sco slight scoliosis too, so my back hurts a lot. And this is my philosophy. If it hurts, lay down and it'll quit. So if my back starts hurting, I lay down for like 10 minutes and I just lay there and relax and I relax my body and I don't take anything. I don't take Tylenol, I don't take Advil, I don't take aspirin, I don't take anything. I'm a tr true believer that if the, pain, if the pain is there, there's a reason. And you need to rub some oil on it, massage it a little bit, lay down and let your body rest. You know, I understand people work and a lot of times they can't, but there are a lot of times they can too. If, if my back starts hurting real bad, I'll just... Like go upstairs and lay down for 10 minutes. And I don't, hopefully I don't fall asleep. The other day I fell down, I laid down and fell asleep and slept for three hours. Oh, God, don't let me sleep that long. I really you have pain right here, like under your toe. Where, okay, that's your eyes and your eyes neck and area. Ears. Your eye and your neck area, too. Okay. Right there on your, and your eyes. Um, Are you having an eye problem? A little bit, yeah. Collodial silver. Have y'all ever heard oh, of yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Great for your eyes. Yeah. Put it. I mean, I, from this um, kidney failure thing, I talked to a guy yesterday, his wife, who's in the stage three kidney failure too, and he wakes up every morning with his eyes. Like my eyes feel like there's sand in it. It hurts so bad. My eyes do. You're with eye specialist. They won't tell you that. Well, <laughs> unless they're holistic oriented. Yeah. Doctors, I, like I said, I don't mind going to doctors, but they're my last resort. After I've tried everything else, and I've looked it up, and I've searched it, and I've researched it, and I've tried other things, it, it took me a year before I finally, it was about nine months, before I finally decided to go to a doctor with a esophagus. I think you're good for doctors because you're teaching them too. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? You're opening an awareness. Well, I called the doctors that, that worked on me, the one that, that did the stretching of my esophagus and told them what it was, because they probably had never seen it in their practice, ever. But it's much more common now, mm -hmm. so maybe they will see it. How and did you use the colonial silver? I put it in my eyes. I Drops. drink it. You drink it? I oh. put it in my you eyes. you put it under your tongue or something, too? Or put it in water? That's how I used to do it. It, it tastes like water. It doesn't taste like anything. Right, so you can like put water. it directly water. under your tongue. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's a colloidal solution. That's what turns your skin to. It's colloidal. So it's, it's, it's where do you get to it? 
So, I get mine from a lady down in South Carolina that makes it. Makes and, it. Okay. Yeah. It, you, you ionize, you coins. ionize you silver see. coins, <laughs> silver, regular silver. Oh. In ancient times, they didn't have refrigeration, like in Egyptian times. And so they found out that if they took a silver coin, put it in the milk, in the bucket, it wouldn't go bad. It killed the bacteria that was in there. Mm -hmm. They have a website, Barbara and Kevin Coons. They have a website too. Everybody's got a website now, right? Yep, yeah, I got one. Yeah. Just a brief contribution. So what do you do, discussion. writer? Uh, You're a writer? A mm -hmm. Really good friend who retired as provost at the University of South Carolina. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was dean of the medical school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little there. Okay, now you got to remember, each toe has a zone. Okay. And if you've got kidney problems, you could have pain up here in the lung area right here. Yeah, and I do have lung, I have congestion right now. Well, energy follows, there's 10 zones. Okay. And five in each feet, on each feet, that go five. down the toes, divide mm -hmm. the, t and if you're, if you got a problem with, say your bladder. Yeah. You could have a problem with your heart. Okay. Because it's in that zone. The pituitary, very important. The pituitary is right there, you say? Yeah, and it's very, very important. It's the brain. Yeah. Is that painful? <laughs> a little. That's the... That's the uh, not this, too bad, though. This is kind of big. It's not hard. too bad. I mean, it's not... So, I, don't, I don't even have a brain, but check mine. <laughs> this, is the, this is the immune system. It That's is. the brain. Oh, the pituitary immune, is the immune system? The pituitary is the brain to the immune system. Yeah, and it's in your brain. Well, I have a, I think I have a Check, compliment. check. It's kind I of stuck. There's like a it? circle. That's the pituitary. And that, that's how you can tell right there. Push it up. And you would recommend Go in and push up. doing those like 15 minutes or something. Like you're saying. Don't do one thing 15 minutes. <laughs> no, no. It's different spots that may be right. Flexology. Work on it, and if you find something that's painful, hold it there for 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Go work something else, two or three things, and come back and work that again. And as you do it three or four or five times, you'll find the pain goes away. It's no longer sore. It doesn't hurt anymore. You've opened up the energy within that zone. Okay. Do you recommend 15 minutes per foot? No, or total. Total. Okay, seven, seven and, and a half, half per foot. Unless you, I think that's doable. Yeah, even when if you're tonight. if you're watching a movie. Or oh something. yeah. I mean, then you but you you don't have your full attention, but still, well, you can, it's better you, than nothing. When you've learned it, it doesn't need your attention. Full attention. Yeah. Once you've, yeah. you've learned that thing, I can I can do it in my sleep. I think it's a gift. Like, I, think, I, I don't really think it's a gift. It. I just do it. I wow. just work that area. Intuition. And if you're, you're having an issue in a, an area, look on your map, look in your zone, and work that zone. Work all the way down that toe. Work that whole area. Okay. And what it does, it opens yep. up that oh zone so that our body is like this. The, the energy is flowing like this. And then it flows up our fingers. It also flows this way, up our fingers. And if we open up the zone, the whole zone, it's going to heal the heart, the brain, the pituitary, the wow. spine, everything that goes down that zone. I've been doing reflexology on myself, but I've been using coconut oil. And you said, you know, I know coconut oil, high, the good high, stuff. High in Swiss coconut oil. It is? Yes. Because I'm rubbing it right into my feet. No. Well, you can't after you do the reflexology. I heard that it's very oils. cooling for the summer. It, because our our livers heat and up. Never, I, I see all three of y'all have your legs crossed. Never cross your legs. I know, legs. and I'm really good about it. I've been really trying and not you know to do why? it. I do cross. It cuts the circulation off this leg, but it throws your hip off on this okay. side. And that's the reason people have sciatica a lot of times, because most of the time it's down this leg, they're yeah. having sciatica. And it throws your back off. So it throws this whole side of your body off. Yeah, I've been conscious of it for a few years now. I know. Yeah. E you know, even when I'm here in these, our ACIM meetings, sometimes I'm like this, I go, okay. 
You want the energy to flow naturally. Come, you know, you don't want to be locked like this, right? Or cross your leg. If anybody is doing, if you're doing reflexology on anybody, never let them cross their hands, never let them cross their arms, never cross anything. They have to have their because when you're doing that, you're crossing the energy. It stops the energy from flowing. When I'm doing dinner, sometimes he'll automatically do it. Yeah. Don't I cross your chest. I see two tiny You want to hold on to something always, okay? okay? Because you want to put <coughs> as much pressure <coughs> as you can on it. Because you need to push it down and put pressure on it. Golf ball is not as good. I mean, it's this harder. is not, it's not as good as a golf ball. Oh, it's golf not ball. as good. Right. This is not as good as golf ball. Okay. Golf ball, this gives too much. Now, this is good for, have you ever heard of the miracle balls? Oh, my gosh. You mean the Chinese one? No, the miracle balls that you put under your back. You lay on the floor. It's called the miracle balls. Everyone should get them. They're well, amazing. They big? They're big, the big no, ones? No, no. Mm -mm. They're the small, like this. We're trying but to guess. They're the, about this big, but it's a book. This woman wrote it. It's called The Miracle Balls. Oh. And I had sciatica, and it, it cured my sciatica. So, but and you better roll on it. But press, see, press down. Make sure you're holding on to something. And then when you can do, you can do your, like this. Like I said, this is not as easy to do as the golf ball. I'm used to the golf balls. Let's just try it. Golf ball's better.